today is some more Creo Direct Modeling Express and we're going to model up an assembly of a clock mechanism called a verge and folio. Um, the idea is is that basically you have a pendulum which is a this shakes back and forth and the gear itself drives the drives the mechanism. Here's a quick little video on how it all works. And the reason why I'm doing this is, is coming into Christmas time and I remember sitting at my grandfather's place and he had a clock that did this and I found it just absolutely mesmerizing. It was notoriously incorrect but a pretty interesting clock. So there's no reason why we shouldn't be able to model this up very quickly in Direct Modeling Express and, and have something that uh, you know potentially we could build and maybe give away as a gift. Okay, so let's get into building this bad boy. now. One thing that we're going to do, or at least the first thing we're going to do, is that we're going to make the crown gear, which is this guy right here uh, with the pins on it. Uh, it will be this first episode, and then after that we'll start covering all the other parts and, and going from there. But this is a great way to start. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select on the plane that we want to draw the circle on. We're going to hit the circle. Now one thing that I generally do is I come on up into here. Normally you see a two-point construction line, but I like throwing a cross down and we'll just use this dialog box to figure out where the zero zero is not that it's terribly important in this but you never know and we're going to create a circle and the circle um, the dimensions that I worked things out was a uh, hundred and thirty millimeters in diameter so that's sixty five in diameter or sixty five radius so we got that and let's just bring this right into the, the full size of the screen from this what we're going to do is, is if I hold down the shift key you'll notice that it locks down to or it snaps to certain geometry so we're going to have the hub and we're going to have a ring that basically holds all the pins and uh, right from here then we're just going to need some spokes and like again this is really nothing that you have to be terribly accurate with so I'm just going to do a spline uh, do something kind of funky something like that and we'll hit the middle mouse button and, and get that ready. And that looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to do from here is that I'm going to mirror it. To mirror, you just hit the mirror, choose the element that you want to mirror. Um, I want to do a vertical mirror. And using the snap, you'll notice that it comes in and, and grabs that one point. So I'm going to hit that, hit the middle mouse button, and that looks pretty good. So at this point what I want to do is have three of these spokes uh, come out on the wheels so of course we're going to have to pattern this we we'll come into pattern elements now press and hold the shift key while you're selecting multiple elements and then hit the middle mouse button so that's selected all the elements that we want we're going to do a circular type of pattern and you gotta tell it where the center is and that looks pretty good to me right there the radial direction. So, what this is asking for is uh, which way, or like you know, basically the kind of geometry that you're going to use for the radial direction. So we'll just click in there. Uh, the angle. I want three spokes, so it's 120 degrees. I only want one in the radial. The number in angular is three, and we'll say okay. And what that does is it produces the sketch out just as I wanted it to right there. Now, from this point in time, we can basically pull this guy out, and I'm going to do a pull, but you'll notice that he didn't grab all of the sketch, and I've kind of left this sketch kind of sloppy, but here's one thing that's kind of neat, is hit the space bar, and this dialog will come up, and you can specify the profiles that you want to use. So at this point, I can start going, okay, well, I want these profiles to come out, and the center profile as well, so I'm going to get the whole thing. And at that point, I just hit the middle mouse button, and I can pull this out. The other thing you'll notice is that this is pulling it out one direction from the plane. What if I wanted it centered on the plane? Well, again, I hit the space bar, and you'll notice this dialog right here. I can say, go to both sides and that direction. And from here, it's just a really a matter of choosing how thick I want this thing to be. So that looks pretty good. And hit the middle mouse button, and then we've got the initial, the initial spoked wheel. Um, so the other thing that I, I kind of wanted is that these spokes maybe were indented just to add a little more flair to the to the look so we're gonna do a pull again and it's we're still within this active sketch and I'm gonna hit the spacebar and I'm gonna grab that and I'm gonna start grabbing the, the selections that are the the areas that I actually want it to uh, to pull from 
and this is usually a little bit of a, a barrier to make sure that you get the right selections but we're going to grab these guys right there and we're going to pull that guy out and we'll hit the little mouse button and at that point we've got things carved out so we've got one face that is flat and the other face that has these spokes that are kind of indented and just to make sure we know what it all looks like is you can just hit the checkbox here to toggle the visibility of that that plane and the sketch that we have so you know, we've got this wheel and we can pretty this up a little bit here in a bit but first thing we gotta do is establish the the crown pins so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna draw a circle and I'm gonna base it off of that one face and the first thing I wanna do in this case is I wanna draw a line just to give me the outside diameter, basically the center point of this of this ring here. Now I wanted it to be um, five millimeters offset from the original, so that's a 60, 60 millimeter line and I'm going to hold down shift and it'll snap to that one point and as I hold down shift it'll lock it into that one plane coming up, otherwise I'm kind of floppy like this. I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we'll go to 60 and we've got that one that one line that we need. At this point, I'm going to come in here, and this is a construction circle, just so that I know what all is going to go on there. We've got that set up, so we've got the construction circle in this one line. This one line is kind of redundant now. I'm going to just delete him out. Um, again, my favorite is always having a cross or some sort of reference to go from. So we'll go like that, and finally we're going to get this pin, and this pin will actually snap down into that intersection right there and I want him to be about three millimeters in diameter so 1.5 radius that looks pretty good and at this time we'll pull this guy out I don't know let's say let's say seven will be a good pin length so we've got that and again I like to get rid of that one sketch so I can see what all I'm working with so we've got everything set up this pin um, of course I want to have a fillet on the or not a fillet, a round on the end of the of the pin so I'm just gonna kinda by guess by golly that and we'll hit that and that looks pretty good all I had to do in this case was is that you selected the the actual circumference and you see these arrows that pop up and if you pull on those arrows they'll give you the chance to create a, uh, a fillet or a round now from here what I really need to do is I need to pattern this pin around the outside and I counted out um, from the clock that I have for reference that there's 31 pins. Part of the reason why there's 31 pins because I'm sure somebody's going to ask is is that so that this pin here doesn't perfectly align with another pin down here. If you have an even number that will happen as soon as you have an odd number the there will not be an alignment of another pin directly opposite of it. So at any rate how we can get this so that we can get it into a pattern so we come to the feature tab now first thing most people do including myself is you go okay I want to do a radio pattern you go for the source and you click on this and it says there's no valid owner found and it doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense to you well part of it is is that what it's looking for is more feature than it is like surfaces and part of that is is just um, grab some faces and we'll set a feature so we know that that pin is considered a boss and we're going to click on that to get the boss faces and at this point I'm going to hold down the shift key and select all the faces that are part of this boss which are all of those and then I hit the middle mouse button and at this point the reference position, main direction, start direction, all of that gets defined because it is pretty logical as it's a cylinder. Sometimes you have to choose all these but in this case you do not have to. So we've got that. Now if I try to do the pattern and I go to the source I click on that pin and it recognizes that pin as a feature next thing we gotta do is that we're gonna do a radial pattern we want the axis so you can start hovering over some of the different geometry on this and you'll notice that as long as I grab a circle um, say like the hub we can grab the axis the number that we need here is 31 a total angle 360 degrees and we're gonna click OK and it propagated everything out there and now we have all those crown pins right there after this, um, I'm going to be creating a, uh, a hub system in here, but I'm going to create some pins. I'm going to create a, uh, a rack and pin kind of gear system. 
Now we have this, we're going to start doing some prettying up of this and one of the first things I'm going to do here is I'm going to just this is one of those aesthetic things where you just uh, kind of come in and start playing with stuff and going well you know I think this looks pretty cool there so we've got that set up then I'm going to grab the other edges that I think should have that that chamfer in it and we'll say okay just by hitting the mouse button, the middle mouse button and what we have here really quickly is the crown wheel done up and ready to go so hopefully that's helped you out with uh, getting things done in Creo Elements Direct Modeling Express and uh, we'll continue on with the rest of this clock here in the, in the next video hopefully next week